Well, here's something I never thought I'd own. What we got here is a uh, Polar Lights um, slot car uh, kit. Um, it's a 130 second slot racing kit. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's basically assembled. It's probably just a snap together kit. I've never actually uh, put one of these together. I've never actually seen one of these before. Um, I never thought I'd own one of these, and well, I guess that's true about owning a real 1965 Imperial um, Crown, because uh, I own one of those for real too. But uh, you know, apparently every time you tell somebody that you own a 1965 Imperial, uh, this is what they tell you. They the first thing they think of, and I, that's not what I think of. I've actually never even seen an episode of the Green Hornet. Um, I just, uh, you know, I've actually heard of it, and with the recent movie and whatnot being out, um, you know, I mean, I don't live under a rock, not a very big one anyway. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, yeah, we're going to put this uh, slot car kit together. Um, now, I don't even have a track for this, so uh, 130 second scale slot car is obviously bigger than your typical slot car, but um, we're going to go ahead and tear into this, and... Um, see what it comes out like. Alright, I got my sharp utensil in hand. Let's get the uh, plastic wrap off of here. Because there's no way I'm leaving this in the box. It's supposedly, I mean, it, they made these, you know, back, you know, 20, whatever, 30 years ago. And this is just a, um, you know, it's like a modern classic version. I don't know what, what you'd want to call it, but you can see they got other slot car versions too. And they got the 57 Chevy Bel Air and the 66 Nova, the muscle cars, uh, like 70, 70 Chevy Camaro, Z28, and the 2006 Camaro concept. Nobody cares. But um, we got the uh, Green Hornet. So let's Oh, look at this, because I've never seen one of these up close before. See box bottom for more info. Yeah, we don't. That's cheating. Alright, so. Twisty ties. Those are definitely a keeper. You never know when you need a twisty tie. Bundle up a bunch of wires or something. Definitely keep those. Get the body loose. Yeah, that's definitely a 65 Imperial. Oh, with a lot of extra stuff on it. Let's get all this out of here. Uh, that looks like it should all just stay in the blister pack for now. Put that out of the way. Got the window glass. Let's see, we got all um, the axles and the... Uh, Contact strips, probably, and all the different associated things with that. A couple other body mounting parts. Shell. Um, tinted glass? What's this other stuff, then? Um, okay, I guess you can have it windows down or windows up, maybe. They give you two different kinds of glass. Looks like interior, interior, got the dash panel here in the middle, and um, I don't even know. Um, that's the rear bumper. It's like where the license plate goes in real life. Yeah, we'll look at that later. A little bits. Um, headlight covers. You got the centerpiece for the grill. All the little rockets out of the front and. The other little pieces. This is a little more involved than they first let on. There's these are the contact strips right here that touch the track probably. This, uh, this is a little bit more complicated than I bargained for. This is going to require a lot of jump cuts. Round two models, 2011 to 2012. Oh yeah, you got uh, all this stuff.
Here, I thought this was going to be a five minute video. 25 and a half minutes later. Some of these look kind of cool. Of course, you got your Trekkie stuff and Marvel and Three Stooges and whatnot. You got Batman, Dukes of Hazard, Ghostbusters. Whatever. Oh, good, the cheat sheet. I sure hope that's what this is. Yeah, that's it. Read this first. Oh, I don't know how to read. But I do know how to look at pictures. Alright, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> bore you with the actual assembly of this vehicle. Unless there's a particular part of the assembly that is, ends up being especially annoying and should be brought to your attention. I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing together. And you're going to get the magic of editing and get to see the thing fully assembled. So, we'll be back. All right, that wasn't too terrible, I suppose. Um, it was a little tough. Um, they obviously um, got a little bit in the extra parts department here. Um, looks like they give you a dashboard, um, which is cool, uh, except there's no steering wheel. There's no, like, dash pad or anything like that. You know that you'd be if you sat in the seat, you'd be facing the dash, and the pad would be along the top. And if this isn't even mentioned in the instructions, you know, to top it all off. So there's part number one that I'll never use. Um, they give you two pieces of back windshield, a little tiny one, and this one. And again, this is not mentioned in the um, instructions anywhere, and it doesn't fit the car anyway. So. Looks like we're not using it. Um, and while we're on the subject of glass, um, it says trim this to fit, and it it doesn't even come close to fitting. This is like a really half-hearted attempt at vacuum forming a tinted windshield glass set. I don't know what you want to call it, but it sucks. Throw that away. Um, they give you axle spacers to cut to length. You won't need those, and you'll see why in a second. And um, we got the two contact uh, pickups and their little braided uh, lines that go off into nowhere. Um, I honestly don't ever plan on putting this on a slot car track, and if I do ever find one that's worthy of putting a slot car on, I doubt it's going to be this one because, well, you'll see why in a minute. So... If you do buy one of these and you don't plan on using it for a slot car, expect there to be a few spare parts. And even if you do use it as a slot car, expect there to be spare parts. Um, also, they give you double-sided tape to literally stick the body to the chassis. That's that's ghetto. That's 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 whack. I'd be pretty upset about that. Um, and we have the. Um, the uh, guide pin, which these contacts, they slide into these uh, oval, or excuse me, rectangle slots on either side here. And then um, this is threaded on the end and it goes in and then it has a nut and a washer that hold it to the body, um, isolating it from the chassis. But um, this sticks so much farther down than the front wheels, it would never look good as a, dis a static display model. So I just forego the installation of that. Now down to the actual vehicle itself. Um, yeah, well, let's just get right into that. First of all, we'll do the chassis, I suppose. As you can see, it's not really anything complicated. I didn't even bother wiring up the motor or anything. It's just 
no point, but it's just your regular gear driven slot car, just like a regular mini, regular, well, I don't know, I won't say mini, but a little, you know, regular size slot car, it's exactly the same. Um, these little pieces on the side here are very erector set esque and basically this is where they want you to put the double sided tape to stick the body to the chassis but the body here I'll show you I mean that's a little bit far off for double sided tape in my world I don't know what planet these people are from but and a second thing too while I have this upside down you'll notice that there's a slot like a track that goes along here and these screws you know they ride in this slot and they allow you to make the chassis as long or as short as you want within the you know reason of this and this is shortened <laughs> to its maximum it, it cannot get any shorter and in order for the front wheels to even fit on the chassis I had to bend this and this piece of metal back it used to be straight like they are here and here and I physically had to bend these back as you can see because they the wheels weren't the front wheels just weren't going to fit uh, in there regardless um, it doesn't even roll well this is definitely going to be way better of a static display model than it ever would be a slot car um, so oh, somebody always texting me when I'm freaking making a movie Anyway, sorry about that. So we'll um, we'll go on to the body now, I guess. Uh, there's not really much to the chassis. Um, it's basically universal. It doesn't matter what kit you buy. You're probably going to get this chassis with these axles that go through bushings. Um, one note that I will make as well, you'll notice the wheel on here is flat on the front. And you can't really tell, but the the dish is actually on this side, and the picture shows the car coming with hubcaps. Where's the picture? It says all necessary components ready to assemble, and it shows it with hubcaps, or well, those are actually wheels, not you know hubcaps. But I just expected uh, you know a sprue of four metal or you know fake chrome plated wheels to just pop into these um, these deep dish wheels but uh, as you can see they they don't give you that and to top it all off with the wheels on this way the offset of the wheel is off so far that it rubs the body of the car so you have to put them on backwards or f yeah backwards see there's the dish and the dish actually should be out, in my opinion, in this way. And then the hubcap should fit in here. And it, did, it doesn't do that. So, again, oh well. This was a gift from a good friend of mine who thought it would be appropriate for me to have this since I do own a real 65 Imperial um, sedan. But obviously mine isn't as modified as this. Uh, basically all you get in the kit is the glass you know with the windows that appear to be down and you get this little bulletproof window and then you get this plastic filler you know it's like the bulletproof section I guess that goes in there and that's how the instru what the instructions tell you to use but they don't say anything about the other piece of glass and then you have to cut out the laser and the rockets the rear bumper unit itself the front rockets have their own pocket that they fit into that's separate um, and they go in since the header panel is all one piece and then you have the laser the grill the two headlight buckets and the clear lenses which on my car the grill is actually all one and it's double round headlights with a big piece of tempered glass covering both so you know, not, 
not really much to the kit. You do have to glue all this together. Uh, it comes off as like a snap together kit, snap tight, whatever. Um, it doesn't even say like what level of hard difficulty it is. I was going to say hardness, but I better watch what I say. Um, it just says complete slot racing kit. High performance Groove Master motor. Yeah, I'm sure that's a real high performance Chinesium motor. Featuring adjustable metal chassis and high traction tires, but the chassis, the chassis adjustability is, is, it's just a, it's just a marketing ploy, I guess. So, I don't, uh, man, it'd be cool if it had those, we the, the wheel covers, or the, the, we the rims, wheels, I can't talk today. That's kind of, you know, that would have made this, but I mean, if you look at it from the side, it, I mean, it looks cool, but it's kind of a hoopty without those wheel, without those rims. You know, that kind of, that was kind of the, the capper on it. That was the, the, the finishing touch, I guess. So, it is what it is. Um... I don't even know what these actually retail for. I mean, they've been out since 2012. I don't even know if slot cars are that are this size are even popular in this millennium. But hey, still cool. You know, still uh, still a 65 Imperial, which is okay in my book. But um, that's about all all there is for the Polar Lights. Retro, Green Hornet, Black Beauty, slot racing car. Thanks for watching.